Hey guys, today I have two book reviews for you. The first being The Ghost by Robert Harris and Wither by Lauren DeStefano. In The Ghost by Robert Harris, a ghost writer is hired to write the memoirs of Adam Lang, one of Great Britain's most controversial prime ministers, after the previous ghost writer mysteriously died. The ghost writer is flown to Martha's Vineyard and has a month to complete the memoirs, but during his stay he begins to discover some disturbing information and finds out a deeper conspiracy is at play. So if you don't know already, if you're not aware, The Ghost has been adapted into a movie. It was made into a movie back in 2010 and it starred Ewan McGregor, Pierce Brosnan, uh, Olivia Williams, and quite a number of other people. And uh, yeah, I saw the movie back when it was released. I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. Uh, yeah, it's taken me an incredibly long time to get around to the book and I really loved this book. So the best way to describe this book, it's a political, psychological, mystery thriller. <laughs> so yeah, that's tackling a lot. And yeah, it's essentially about a ghost writer who takes over the job after the previous ghost writer has mysteriously died. And yeah, the ghost writer finds himself in a political conspiracy involving a former British Prime Minister. And yeah, I really enjoyed this from start to finish. I think it had a really nice pace. It moved along really well. And it definitely had me intrigued from start to finish because even though I did see the movie prior to reading this book. Like I said, that movie came out in 2010, so I couldn't remember a hell of a lot of details, which which I think is a good thing because uh, the suspense was definitely there for me that I couldn't remember plot points and plot twists, you know. So yeah, this is definitely really intense and intriguing, uh, a really nice pace that keeps you hooked page after page. And more specifically, uh, you know, depending on what type of reader you are. Are you a reader who's after plot or are you a reader after character? So yeah, uh, if you're someone who's looking for character development, you're not going to get it in this book. This is definitely a book, like most mystery thrillers, that is all about the plot and the conspiracy and the political atmosphere and all that, you know? So yeah, you're not going to get a lot of character detail and attention in this book. And yeah, just to touch on the political atmosphere of this book, I don't want to get into it too much because that's just not me. I don't like talking about politics. <laughs> but yeah, this book is definitely a commentary on the war on terror post 9-11. So if you're into that sort of thing, I definitely recommend you pick this up. And just a little tidbit, something interesting about this novel, uh, it's called The Ghost Rider. And you never learn the name of the ghost writer, interesting enough. Uh, other characters never refer to him by name, and he himself never refers to himself by his name, uh, which I think is interesting. I think there's a certain bit of symbolism there. And that gives the title of this book a nice dual meaning, if, if you get my idea. Because the ghost writer, he is very much foreign to us as a character. We really know nothing about him. That's what I was saying earlier. You're not going to get a lot of character development in this book. Uh, the ghost writer, he's definitely very foreign to us. Uh, he's definitely a mystery. And he just lingers off to the side. You know, he is a silent observer and a silent witness. And he's he's just taking notes essentially, you know, while he's watching and listening to this former British Prime Minister. So in a way he's almost like a ghost, if you will, you know, how how off to the side he is, how little you you really pay attention to him. Even though he is narrating this story, he's still almost like a ghost, weirdly enough. Overall, if political, psychological, mystery thrillers, some combo there, if that's your sort of thing, I highly recommend this book. It's not too long or lengthy, moves along at a great pace, and I think you'll find yourself going through it fairly quickly. 
Plus, it's just a nice look at the world of ghost writing <laughs> because ghost writing, it's like I've heard of the term before and I know what it means, but it's nice, it's really nice to experience the story through someone who is a ghost writer and what that means and what the job is all about and kind of the misconceptions about it. So, so yeah, kind of a, a lot of interesting things going on. <laughs> In Wither by Lauren De Stefano, males live only to age 25 while females only to age 20. In this world, young women are kidnapped and forced into polygamous marriages with wealthy men to keep the population from dying out. 16-year-old Rhine is kidnapped one day and finds herself marrying a man she doesn't know, entering a world of wealth and privilege that covers up the truth of the outside world. Rhine wants to escape, but it's hard to do when her new father-in-law watches her every movement, and her husband gives her limited freedom. Rhine has to learn to trust her sister wives and wait for the ideal opportunity to escape. You guys, this book has such an interesting premise. It's the premise that definitely caught my attention. I really like the idea of this dystopian world, men lived 25, women to only 20, and yeah, the population is slowly dwindling. And that's a truly terrifying concept, you know? I think it's, it's definitely very foreign for us to even contemplate a future where our population could just dwindle like that and we die off really young. It's like, is that a possibility? It's, it is. It's truly terrifying to sit and think about. And yet the reason why men live to 25 and women only live to 20, it's all about genetic experimentation. And yeah, I like that this book, that's a big plot point. You know, the world through techn technological advancements, medical advances, just so many advances in our history. But the thing is, those advancements come at a cost. Because something we learn about fairly quickly early on in this book is that scientists were trying to eradicate cancer, for instance. But in doing that, that, has, that is what has caused this current predicament, if that makes sense. <laughs> So I liked what Lauren De Stefano was trying to do with this novel because she definitely creates a really compelling dystopian world that's truly terrifying. She creates this world where young women are essentially kidnapped, they're forced to marry men that they don't know, they're forced to provide children to help keep the population going. So that sounds great, right? Everything I've kind of just told you, it all sounds great. There's kind of hints of The Handmaid's Tale by uh, Margaret Atwood. I've never read that book, but from what I know, it, it sounds pr pretty similar to this. <laughs> They're practically the same concept, I think. So yeah, all of that sounds great, right? This interesting dystopian world. I gotta say though, the book, it started off promising. I really liked a good chunk of the beginning. But I felt like after the first hundred pages or so, the story kind of started falling downhill. <laughs> and falling downhill rather rapidly. Uh, the plot progression, the character progression, I just found myself not really caring anymore. <laughs> Part of me really wishes this was not a young adult novel. That's, that's my core problem with this book, is that it is young adult. Uh, because Lauren De Stefano, she just falls back on typical young adult tropes. She throws in a love triangle and it's it is it's just uh, so frustrating because there's so much promise to this novel and I just wish it had been maybe a regular adult fiction novel if that makes sense. I will say though that the strongest aspects of this book is definitely the main character, Ryan, her relationship with her fellow sister wives. Because uh, like the synopsis was suggesting, men marry multiple women in order to produce as many children as possible to keep the population going. So yeah, Ryan, she's married to this guy who already has like three or three or four other wives already. <laughs> so yeah, I love that relationship 
relationship that Ryan had with the other sister wives uh, because they don't initially get along but they kind of have to force themselves to get along eventually over time. So I definitely think the book was strongest in terms of that relationship, the, the relationships that Ryan had with other women. But yeah, where this book got a little messy and had me just rolling my eyes out of annoyance was her relationship with the male characters. I don't know. In some ways, I just don't... I didn't really appreciate that practically all of the men in this book were villainized. You know what I mean? It's like, just because of the nature of this world, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to villainize every single man. And also, my additional problem with the male characters, not only are they all just villainized for no reason, uh, they all have absolutely no personality. They lack emotion. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of end this review. I'm just getting frustrated talking about it. <laughs> Overall, this isn't an entirely bad book by any means. There just wasn't enough happening to keep me engaged and entertained. And this book also suffers from the fact that it's the first book in a series. So if you want to know the outcome of how things are going to play out, you need to pick up the next couple books. But that's also my problem with this book. It didn't really give me much of a reason to continue the series because the way this book ends, without giving away any spoilers, it kind of ends in such a way that it's kind of satisfactory, that you're kind of happy with the conclusion. So yeah, I don't know. I, I'm probably not going to finish this series, unfortunately, because the way the book ended, it, I was kind of just satisfied with how it ended, quite honestly. And yeah, like I said, the book, it just didn't have enough to keep me entertained or engaged. I wish there was just more going on because the main character, Ryan, she doesn't really do much of anything. The whole story takes place in this mansion, you guys. That's it. They, the characters really don't go anywhere else. They're all trapped in this mansion. So yeah, it's just a lot of Ryan sitting around trying to plot her escape route, eating, talking with the sister wives trying to go hang out with this servant boy that she has a crush on. So, yeah, just not enough interesting things happening for me. I guess for me, I personally wanted to see more of this world. It's a dystopian world, and I want to see what the outside world looks like. Due to the population dying out, what does the world outside look like exactly? So, yeah, you guys, uh, that's it for these two book reviews. In the comments below, have you guys read these books? Do you want to? Just share your thoughts and opinions down below. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye, guys.